Today's video is super special because it's the first one I am filming here in our new home, as you can tell by the different background behind me. And I am really excited to kick off the videos in this new home with a ton of Dollar Tree fall DIYs. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor so if you love that too be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. Let's get into the fall DIYs. I love these so much and I know you guys will too. Up first, we are gonna make this awesome garland with Dollar Tree's burlap leaves. Now they usually have the brown ones, but I found some awesome colors this year and I thought this would be great for our new mantle. I grabbed some jute twine as well as a dowel needle to string up some wood beads. These are the Dollar Tree wood beads, but you could use whatever you have. And then I grabbed my leaves and started to apply them. Now the back has this little hook mechanism on it. And so I just looped that right over the jute twine. I decided to do a pattern of the four colors repeating across my mantle and I just use those beads as a little spacer just to make sure it didn't slide too far. Now some of my hooks fell off so I just fished it through the back like this and then that way they aren't going to fall off on you but this is a super quick and easy project and you just make it to the size of your space. I love the colors it's totally customizable and you can even add letters or sayings to the leaves as well. If you're looking for some free printables, I do have some fall ones coming in a future video, but I wanted to remind you I've got a full pack of 20 from last year. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. We're gonna keep rolling with the leaf theme here. I love these little chalkboard tags. These are new this year and I decided to use them in two different fun ways. I grabbed some that looked more like maple leaves, kinda, they're not full maple leaves, but then also some longer and skinnier ones. And the base of this is just strung up beads. They are those Dollar Tree beads as well as some Buffalo check ones I got from Amazon for Christmas last year. And I'm just stringing them up, tying the leaf onto the one end, and then I'm gonna make a tassel to attach to the other end. I do that by taking my four fingers and wrapping the jute twine around about 40 times. The more you wrap it, the thicker your tassel is gonna be. Once those loops are wrapped, pull it off your fingers and take a scrap piece and tie the top. This is going to be the start of the head of your tassel. Then I'm gonna pull all of my pieces down and wrap the top to create the second part of the tassel head. And also make sure you tie that really tight as well. Once that's all secure, take your scissors and cut the loops on the bottom, creating the little fringes for your tassel. Give it a haircut if it needs it. And then we're gonna tie it on to that open end of our bead strand. And when you get it tied, you're gonna have some little wispy ends. I like to take one of the pieces and feed it back up through the last bead. That's just going to give you a cleaner finish, trim any other ends and you're good to go. These are perfect for around both real and fake pumpkins and I really love the black motif. Now a second way to use these are as some fun napkin rings. I just strung up 12 beads, so six buffalo checks, six regular. I tied it a triple knot, and then I used my two little ends to attach it to the leaf. So just string it through, wrap it around. You kind of have to get creative on what will work for each shape. But once you have that tied, you've got a really fun napkin ring. All you have to do is take your napkin, fold it up, pinch the end so it will go through the circle and then it will hold it together on your play setting. These would also make really great nameplates for play settings so I could add Whitney, Alex, Finn, Grandma, whatever you want to add to the little leaves or just leave them just like this which is what I'm going to do and I really love them. Here's a quick hack for a fun and easy wood sign. Grab yourself any type of wood at Dollar Tree. I'm using these pieces that I recently found, but you can use whatever you have and some window clings. Now I loved these because it had coffee and leaves and all the things, so I decided to use it for a sign. First step is to paint your wood white and let that dry. And then I went back through with some Waverly Antique Wax. This is just a thinner, kind of glazing technique. I just wipe it on and then wipe it off. And it was a little too dark to see the wording, so I decided to add a little bit more white paint at the end. Then it's time to get creative. Peel off your window clings, put them wherever you want on your sign, and you can also cut them apart. So I chopped apart Hello and Autumn because I wanted it to lay a little bit different than the piece originally was. I added some Mod Podge after I laid everything down for a dry fit and made sure to press it down with a thin coat. That is key. Don't cake it on, just enough to make it stick. 
and then apply all of your other pieces let those dry and then your last step is to take a light coat of mod podge again straight over the top i'm using a matte mod podge and that will also help to get rid of the extra glare from the window clings I love the fonts and the colors here, and this is a really quick and easy sign for my entryway that only took me about 10 minutes. I also love these mini cutting boards you can find in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. And so I decided to do a similar technique, painting them white. I did the tops, the bottoms, and around the outside. And then I used these window clings from the same section at Dollar Tree. One says sweater weather and pumpkin spice, and the other one is celebrate autumn. I applied it, I did any trimming that I needed to on either side, and then let it dry, go back over with some Mod Podge just to make sure it's sealed down, and finish it off with your choice of ribbon or embellishments. These things are great for tiered trays or just little vignettes. Really great for kitchens as well because they don't take up a ton of space but add some nice color. I absolutely love these watercolor signs at Dollar Tree and I was in need of a new door hanger so I grabbed this red truck as well as this hanging arrow sign to create a really fun piece. These circles came from the regular Crafter Square section. A lot of you have told me Dollar Tree Plus has some of these. I do not have a Dollar Tree Plus anywhere near me, so these were in the regular Dollar Tree Crafter Square section. I started by faux staining it with that antique wax that we used in the last project, and then before I re-added the hanger, I added some more of those beads I had left over just for a little extra zhuzh. Then it was time to deconstruct my arrow sign. The only way it's hooked together is with some staples and some ribbon, so I chopped it apart. I removed the pieces from my truck sign, any of the extra embellishments I didn't need, and I glued it right on top. They're both watercolor motifs, so it makes it really easy to have them look like they are just one 3D sign. And then I knew I needed a bow because I wanted to cover those holes that were left from the original truck sign. So I'm taking some Hobby Lobby burlap, but you can use Dollar Tree as well. I'm starting by arranging it like an awareness ribbon, pinching the center, and then tying it. And that's how you can get a fun little bow without having the bulkiness of the tie in the center. I hot glued the center of the bow down and then I also hot glued the two pieces to either side of the truck just so then that way I knew they would sit where I wanted them to and make sure those holes were covered. This looks really awesome on top of my boxwood wreath that I've had for years from Marshalls and Home Goods, and it really adds some pizzazz to my front door. Now what if you're not ready to go full tilt fall yet? You want a little more transitional? Well, I've got you. Grab one of these leaves and some plastic wood or whatever wood filler that you have. I filled the top where the original hanger was just so there wasn't a gaping hole in this because we're not gonna hang it from that. Once that plastic wood dries for about five, 10 minutes, take some sandpaper and just sand it down so it's flat. And then I decided to faux stain this with that antique wax again, but you could paint it, do whatever matches your decor. Then I'm taking another one of those rounds from Crafter Square and painting the entire thing white, letting it dry, and then taking some hot glue and attaching my fun stained leaf to the front. Now I tried to do something fun with some frayed ribbon at the top. It was a fail, so I took it off and just added some jute twine. But this is a really nice and simple sign that you could easily add your family's name to, and it's a really great transitional piece from summer to fall where you're not full-blown orange yet. If you're like me, you were super excited to see that Dollar Tree has some more watercolor items in their collection this year, but these were hanging signs. So to get them to stand up on a tiered tray like I wanted, I grabbed some little clothespins, I got rid of the back hanger, and then I glued the deconstructed clothespin, I just popped it apart, onto the back of each sign. Easy enough, once it dries, you've got a nice little kickstand for both of your signs, and you can use them where they will now sit up on their own. I'm using my Give Thanks pie on my dining room table in this little vignette. It's quick and easy and you can then use it as a stand-up sign versus a hanging one. I was so excited to see these sweater pumpkin clips this year. They usually have the regular ones where they're just the plastic pumpkins. Now to remove the clip on the back, all you have to do is give it a good twist. And when I found these beads, they were hidden in a box, so just PSA there, but you can use any beads that you have. They don't have to be Dollar Tree beads. I'm just using the beads as a spacer like I did before with the other garland and then I'm taking my dowel needle to string up all these little pumpkins. The inside is just full of styrofoam. It's nothing too crazy. You just have to get around that stem in the front and I like to try, especially if you're going to hang it, to get as close to the top as you can so that stem won't make it top heavy and have it flip over. 
After a little bit of finagling and messing with it, I was able to get the doll needle through with the jute twine and I continued on with all of the pumpkins and the spacer beads to create this little garland. It's great to fill an open area and you could also hang it up as a traditional garland. I'm using it on my dining room table as an addition to my runner across that tray and it makes it look nice and full and colorful and I just love the little sweater material on the outside. I wanted to hop in and give you a quick update on where we are with our new house because so many of you have been asking in the comments. So we are moved in, we have closed down the house, but unfortunately right after we closed, Finn and I got sick with the virus. Oh no! We had evaded it for two and a half years, but we ended up getting it. It was mild for both of us, thank goodness, but we we're just getting back into the swing of things and moving in and recovering. I will have a specific video coming up shortly with more information about our move and things we used and Amazon finds, just all the things, because you guys have been asking about that. So be sure you're subscribed so it notifies you when I post that video. Now let's get back into the DIYs. When I was in the store recently, I saw these yard stakes. I knew I needed them, but I didn't know what for. But then I saw this sign and I thought, okay, I know what I'm gonna do with this. I grabbed three different kinds and when the red one got home, I decided it wasn't really my vibe. So I started by removing all of the little stakes on the back and all you have to do is bend it. I'm not even that strong and I'm just popping it right off. It's nice and easy. Then to take the red one to be a little bit more my style, I removed the raffia from the top. You can just peel it off. And then I'm using Rub and Buff to give it a gold look instead of a red one. All you have to do is take a paintbrush and brush it on. Now you can buff it in with a towel. That's traditionally how it's used, but I decided I wanted more full coverage. So I just went ahead and painted it on. And while that dried, I painted the top with some black matte chalk paint so that it matched the other pumpkin. To make sure it was dry, just buffed it out with a little paper towel and then it was good to go. I used some hot glue to reapply the raffia I pulled off so again it would match the other pumpkins. And then I needed to get rid of this little bump at the bottom of all of them so they would sit flat on the top of the sign. I'm just using these tin snips I recently got from Amazon. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I can cut through so many things with it. I will link them down below. So then we're creating a full little kickstand for the back of our pumpkins so they'll sit on top of this sign. I'm using Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks to create an inverted T here. So I'm doing one across the bottom and then one straight up and that's gonna create a little kickstand. Now you can also use that if you like these pumpkins and just want them to be a shelf sitter without the sign, you could do that as well. Just give a little kickstand on the back, call it a day. Then once those both have T's, I'm putting the two on either side and the orange one in the center. Pretty easy, just glue it right to the top of the sign. And then to give it a little bit more rigidity, I'm adding some hot glue between my orange and each side flanking pumpkin so they're all stuck together. I am so happy with how this turned out. I really love the metallic gold on the one side with the white pumpkin and the orange. This is great to fill the shelf in our front room. And I just flanked it with some family photos because it says thankful, grateful, and blessed. And I feel like it fits with having family photos there. All the leaves match at the top and this is a winner. I love this sign so much. That's gonna do it for today's edition of Dollar Tree DIYs. As always, let me know your favorites down in the comments. And also, if you aren't following me over on Instagram, be sure to do that, because I've been sharing a ton of updates on the house via my stories. So it's just whiskey and wet over on Instagram. I will link it down in the description for you. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.